Hi, this is Kat Sanders. We're going to talk today a little bit about lead generation. Specifically, we're going to deal with the prospecting and the marketing. So first, I'd like to talk about a quote from Mark Twain, one of my favorites. He said, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off the bow line, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, and discover. I think if we look back at some of the opportunities we've been presented in our lives, we can probably all say there were the few things that we uh, would like to go back and change. So what's the difference between prospecting and marketing? Well, prospecting is kind of the now. Prospecting is immediate. Hopefully it's a very active, hands-on type of, of, um, of activity, and so hopefully you're going to be getting a customer now or getting to talk to somebody right away. Now marketing, on the other hand, it's for the future. It's something that you do consistently to guarantee that there is going to be a future and to get future business. You know, talking to people that may not be thinking about buying or selling right now is something good for the future. Generally, marketing costs a little bit more money. So prospecting is something that most agents do until they have the money to do marketing. But every time you make a commission, you really ought to set a little bit aside for marketing because it's going to be so much easier in the future when you get busy to be able to take your business to the next level by having money to help you instead of always just spending your time and your talents on prospecting. So it's kind of like this. If you need to eat tonight, go out and catch a fish. And if you go out there and you're persistent, you will probably catch a fish. But when you want to feed yourself for the rest of your life, you need to build a business. So you start by buying a boat. Then you can get out there where the fish are. You know, the next thing is to own an entire fleet where you're directing everything from off-site. You know, that's how you want to build your business. A lot of agents kind of stay in the I'm going out and trying to catch a fish every day kind of thing and you'll never be tremendously successful. You might be able to feed yourself. Hopefully you'll catch a fish every day and enough fish to feed your family. But you really want to try to build your business to, um, to a point where you can you know, own a shipping fleet, a fishing uh, boat fleet. All right, so in prospecting, the first thing to consider is who do you know? Because that's what prospecting is about, is those people that you've already met. So to make money now, look at the people who already like you, who already trust you, family, friends, co-workers. If you've been to the same dentist for five years, you know, that's a good prospect. That's someone that you should talk to about, you know, gee, I can bring you some clients, but if you talk to somebody that's thinking about buying or selling a house, would you please think of me and here's some cards. So this is how you prospect. Uh, if, you're, if you have kids that are in sports, great way to prospect. PTA, youth sports, community uh, drama, or um, you know, if they're in a kung fu class, something like that. Those are people that you can talk to and prospect to and find out who they might know. So it's not just them, but it's who they might know. So your sphere of influence is not just your family and your friends, but it's those people that they kind of know as well. And you really need to think, have you truly reached out to those people and often enough? Do they know you're in real estate? Are they actively out there helping you find leads? Are they keeping their ears and their eyes open and listening for somebody to say, hey, I'm thinking about buying a house? Those are people that you really want to make sure that they think of you when they think of real estate. Make sure that they see you as not a friend, not a family member, but a real estate professional. And that's a, that's a little bit of a trick to do, but sending them information, talking to them, showing them that you're in real estate and that you're serious about it is a great big help. Again, this is just an example of the people that you know and how every one of them has their own sphere of influence. And so, of course, that can be more business for you once they talk to these people and find out that somebody may be thinking about buying or selling a house. So great way to start your business and always a very solid way because these people already trust you. They know that you'll do a good job for them and they know you'll do a good job for their friends. 
So here's some ideas. Uh, first and most important thing is that you have to schedule time for prospecting. It doesn't just happen. And I think a lot of us, you know, we have so much fun going out looking at properties or, or dealing with people one-on-one -on -one that we kind of forget the prospecting side of it. If you don't schedule time for it, it's not going to happen. You know, here's some other ideas. Maybe put out a banner in Little League game. If those people already know you, they see you out there, out on the field, you know, there's your sign, there's your face, you know, gee, I'm in real estate. They're going to start relating you to being a real estate agent instead of just Jimmy's mom or Jimmy's dad. <laughs> Wear your name badge or a shirt with a logo on it. That helps them to remember that you are in real estate. You know, oftentimes I would wear a logoed shirt to church because I would have open houses afterwards and people at church would ask me about it. I would never have to talk to them about, oh gee, did you know I'm in real estate? It was kind of right there. And then it would bring up a nice casual conversation. So sending out newsletters or an email campaign to people you know to again remind them that you are credible and that you are in real estate. Uh, bringing up real estate in casual conversation. Not trying to sell them, hey, you're trying to buy a, buy a house today or whatever, but just kind of bringing it up in conversation that, you know, you met this great couple um, at your open house or, you know, that you uh, found out something about uh, an area that maybe we, you didn't know before. That's a good way to kind of bring it up in a very casual conversation. And I would outright ask them for help. Ask them to please keep you in mind if they hear about someone buying or selling real estate. It's just a really good way for them to be able to help you and, and your friends want to help you. But they won't think of it unless you say something about it, unless you kind of put, it, put that seed in their mind. There's still, of course, the old faithfuls going door to door, sending out a note card or a letter. Those things do still work, and especially if you're in your own neighborhood or if you're sending to people that you know, it is a much more effective way. Okay, now let's talk about marketing. Marketing, uh, first you have to kind of decide who is it you want to reach. So to set yourself up for future business, look towards people you want to know. Um, if you're trying to become a uh, great probate uh, real estate agent, then maybe probate attorneys are people that you want to know. So I guess first kind of decide what your niche is, where your talents lie, what type of person that you want to reach, again, and then specifically market to those people. And you can do it in a variety of ways, but here's kind of a list of some of the things that you want to, that you might want to think about. You know, politicians are people that are out in public a lot. They know a lot of people. Somebody good to know is somebody that knows a lot of people. Other agents for referrals, especially agents outside of the area, those would be great people to know and maybe someone you want to market to. Here are some marketing ideas. Again, just like with prospecting, you've got to schedule time. If you don't schedule time, it's never going to happen. You know, your day should be broken out in segments that say, you know, I'm going to spend time working on my paperwork during this time of the day, and I'm going to set time to do my marketing and my planning and my accounting, you know, different times of the day. Now, we all know in real estate that a buyer will call or an opportunity will present itself and our schedule is out the window. But if you set a regular schedule and then you take that time and replace it somewhere else, don't let it go away, just move that time to another day or to another hour of the day to make sure that it still happens. Again, work towards your niche, those things that you're good at. Develop a budget. This is a business for you and you need to treat it that way. You need to know what your budget's going to be now and when you make more money, what's your budget going to be then and what are you going to spend that money on. Spending your money wisely is a very important thing in real estate because there are so many opportunities. You're probably getting emails all over the place and calls saying, hey, buy this great thing. Well, you've really got to make sure that you're spending your money wisely. Uh, that it's going to get a good return for you. You want to send out newsletters, emails, even to people that you don't know or have just met. Maybe you get some email addresses from your open houses. That would be something that you'd want to do for marketing. You want to set up a database of everybody that you know and everybody that you don't know and everybody whose email address or, or phone number or name that you get. And then target market. You know, if you're going to send something to seniors, you want to make it applicable to seniors. Remember that it's not about you and what you want to sell. It's about them and what they want to hear. So make sure that you're marketing to what they need and to appeal to them, not just appealing to what you, what you want to tell them. And then test each campaign. 
if you don't have good success, either it's not a good thing for you to do, maybe it'll work for somebody else, but it's not a good thing for you, or maybe it's just not a good thing in this kind of market. So try it out for a short period of time, and if it works, great, keep it up. If it doesn't work, move on to the next thing. And then also, internet marketing can be very effective, can be very reasonable. You can do pay-per-clicks, you can do v-flyers, you can uh, advertise on Craigslist. There are a lot of good ways to do marketing on the internet. Okay, now, be a lead generation machine. This is something that you've really got to focus on. You really have to make sure that you're systematic, that you're treating your business like a company, that you're not acting like an employee. You know, we're all bosses. Uh, we work for ourselves, and sometimes we're really lousy bosses because we really don't hold ourselves accountable to do those things that just aren't as fun as some of the other things. And maybe it's easier to uh, go play with your kid instead of, you know, doing your work. Well, I say go play with your kid as often as you can, but you've got to make sure that you're setting that time aside to do your business, the things that you need to do, especially if you're relying on this business for an income to feed that family. It's pretty important to have food on the table for them. So plan ahead and work your plan. Set up your database, work it and add to it every week, maybe even every day. And then track your success. Even if it worked before, again, don't just track it that first time. Continue to track it. Look towards future growth in your business. Don't just stay stagnant or stagnant that, gee, I made enough money this year, I'll do the same thing next year. Try and find more ways to continue to grow and leverage yourself by hiring other people if you need to, to continue to grow your business to a great success level. And then use the ideas of other people to grow your company. Um, I had an idea from my stepdaughter that that we as an industry were not reaching her generation because we were too much about us. You know, if you look on a, a realtor's website, it was all about, you know, me standing there next to the sign and, you know, not about information. And, and the next generation is all about, give me the information, give me the information, make it easy to read. I don't care about you until I know that you have what I need and what I need is information. So, you know, listen to other people, talk to other people about it, get ideas from other people, and uh, it can be really, uh, really helpful in your business. A couple of cautions. The first one is the technology trap. We, you know, technology is there for our convenience and to make things easier, and it's wonderful. But sometimes it ties us down and steals our time. For example, blogging. You know, you want to get into blogging, you don't know how to do it, you work some time on it, and then you find out you really love it, and you spend three hours a day doing blogging. You should spend no more than 15 minutes every single day looking at things on technology, say your blogging or your Facebook, or, you know, you've got to set a time, otherwise you can be just absolutely trapped in it. The other problem is getting ready to get ready, and I see this a lot with agents. They're trying to plan and they're trying to make everything so perfect to the point where it never actually makes it out the door. So don't spend too much time getting ready to get ready. Don't be thinking every day, gee, what should I be doing? Take a couple of days off. Go to a retreat or get away from the house. Uh, go somewhere where you're just all by yourself or if you have a partner that you're it's just the two of you. And figure out your entire plan for the year and then stick to it. Just take that time to think it through and then you don't have to spend every day going, gee, I wonder what I could do to make money because your plan will already be there. So uh, take the time to plan and don't spend too much time putting everything together. Just get it done. A couple of other cautions is the roller coaster ride. When you get tied up with a couple of clients, maybe they're very time consuming, they're a little difficult to work with, but you've got clients and so boy you're going to find a house for them. Sometimes you get caught in that roller coaster of you're so busy and you get your client going and then they get into escrow and you're so busy getting all the paperwork done and all of a sudden you get your commission check and you go, wow, now what? I have nothing else going on. And you have to start all the way over again and so it's that momentum of getting started and, and starting to meet people and then getting a, another buyer. It, it's emotional and it's, and it's never going to be a successful, tremendously successful way to do real estate. You've got to get this into a machine. You've got to make it a business. Otherwise you're going to be on that roller coaster ride both economically and emotionally. And then the time trap. Again, you spend your time doing the things you like to do and avoid those things that you don't like. When you have a job, let's say you're a secretary, 
and you go to work and you have to be there at 8 o'clock because that's what's expected of you and then your boss says file these folders and you hate to file and you hate it and you might put it off and procrastinate till kind of the end of the day but eventually you've got to file those things because that's what's expected of you when you have your own business there's nobody standing over you saying why aren't those things filed so you take those things that you don't like as much and you push them aside and those things may be the very things that are going to make you money you know look at the things that you do throughout the day and decide this is productive this is a system and it needs to get done but it doesn't need to get done today I need to do the proactive things the productive things first and I need to make sure that I set the time for those things and the rest need to kind of fall into place as I can do them because some of the systems you can do anytime the productive things you've got to do to live and to make money then your unique selling proposition you really need to know who you are and what makes you you and if someone walked up to you a stranger walked up to you on the street and said why would I want to work with you as a real estate agent you would better have an answer and really that answer may be best suited for that particular person and it's not like okay for you I'm this and for you I'm that you need to know how you are and make a list of 35 things that you have that are uniquely you maybe you're tremendously educated because you believe in education and you go to classes all the time maybe you are or you watch my video maybe you are tremendously experienced you have years and years of experience selling real estate maybe you're just very very loyal maybe you don't have any other buyers and so that buyer or that seller is going to be your world you know whatever your you unique selling proposition is you should know it are you technology based are you technology savvy are you good with marketing do you know a lot of people what will you do that is uniquely you that is different from the other agents once you have that list and that list hopefully should be in your mind memorized when someone says what is it you can do for me you can look at that person and say okay that's a senior they're looking to sell their home they may not care that I can do everything paperless and that I'm really good on technology because that may not be their thing but wouldn't it help them with the fact that I'm good at technology and that's what the new generation is looking for and so I can reach those buyers that need to buy a house because I can do that technology so again if I'm talking to a younger person I talk about all the great technology I have and and that I use in my business if I'm talking to an older person that may or someone that you just don't feel is involved in technology take a little spin on it and say yeah I'm really good with technology and that's gonna help me reach those buyers that are looking to buy your house so again know what it is that is uniquely you that you are good at and then you also need to be able to answer that question what is going on in the real estate market and you need to do it in a very very quick time frame we always say at the elevator speech what could you say to someone or how can you answer that between floor one and floor two fifteen to twenty maybe thirty seconds worth of what's going on in the real estate market and you need to have that answer so you need to be watching reading the news and watching what's going on and talking to other agents and seeing what's out there don't assume that they know it don't assume that they know what a short sale is or that they even if they think they know what a short sale is do they truly know what a short sale is you need to be out there educating them so that they see your knowledge and your value and part of that is you do need to know what's going on that there, it is a seller's market or it is a buyer's market or they're getting multiple offers um, or that prices are going up or that interest rates are heading up or that interest rates are heading down you need to know what's going on out there so that you can give a good explanation to your uh, buyer or seller or to just just the person on the street that asks you that question succinctly it needs to be almost memorized almost a script that you memorize that you know how to answer and when you're giving that uh, that little script it should be a positive perspective I see the, this a lot where a real estate agent kind of whines and complains to maybe just another real estate agent um, maybe to a client about the market and how awful it is and how this buyer did this to me and and if you don't like your job if you don't like what you do people aren't going to want to work with you I mean, really think about it if you're going to go and um, buy a car if, are you going to want to buy a car from someone who loves cars and who loves what they do and is a pleasure to be around if you're going to go on a tour do you want a tour guide that truly loves that area of town or 
or truly loves the outdoors that can convey that to you. Absolutely, everybody wants to work with someone positive, uplifting, enthusiastic, and someone that loves what they do. So make sure that you're not negative selling. Make sure that you're bringing out the glass half full side of everything. That it's always a good time to buy or to sell. It depends on the circumstances. And so right now, yeah, is it a good time to buy? Well, there's two ways to look at it. Everything's multiple offers. Gee, it's awful. It's hard out there. Nobody can get anything. I write 46 offers and just to get one accepted. Or could you say, wow, what a great time to buy. You're buying in at the bottom of the market where, you know, things can only go up. You're buying in, you know, at a time when prices are so low that how could you possibly go wrong? This is a, a great time to buy. So many people that bought two years ago wish they were buying now instead. So there's a couple of ways to look at everything and make sure that you're looking and conveying the positive side of, of the story. That's it. I want to thank you for participating and for watching. Keep up the training. It always helps. And again, tune in again real soon. Thanks.